Hey everyone, this is Dylan here, and today we're going to go over specimen rejection in the micro lab. So, specimen rejection bas basically involves when you receive a specimen in the lab, if it's not uh, appropriate, we will not be uh, working it up. So, what that means is, for example, an, uh, an unlabeled specimen, a specimen that was collected improperly. And we see this you know, occasionally, for example, if you have viral transport media and you try collecting a bacterial culture in that, you know, that's not an appropriate collection method because the viral transport media has antimicrobials in it. To, uh, so that basically, it'll kill any bugs that you're trying to culture. So that's definitely not a, an appropriate collection method. And, and you know, sometimes there's miscommunication and, and uh, that is sometimes collected improperly. Um, another one is, you know, if something's received in the lab and it's leaking or it's spilled, you know, that's not something that we can work up. So we have to reject that specimen. And what that means is, uh, you know, they have to recollect or they're simply not able to, uh, you know, get the tests that they requested. And, um, you know, in today's time, uh, specimen rejection uh, also relates to uh, uh, respiratory specimens that we get. And um, so there are various types of respiratory specimens. For example, example uh, sputum, which is basically like, expectorated from you. Um, and uh, that one we do have to uh, do a quality check on. It's the only specimen that we do a quality check on. And that is a CAP requirement or College of American Pathologists. And what that means is that we take the specimen and we look at it underneath the microscope. Uh, we do a gram stain on it and then we compare the number of epithelial cells to the number of white blood cells, or uh, neutrophils specifically. And uh, so we make that comparison to basically see if it looks like more spit or if something indicative of a bacterial infection, which would be the uh, neutrophils. And uh, we do make that comparison. And you can also visually just inspect the uh, sputum when you receive it. Sometimes it literally just looks like spit. You know, that doesn't look like anything infectious. So we do that quality check on sputum. You, when you have your deeper respiratory specimens, for example, your bron bronchial washes, your bronchial uh, lavages, uh, we do do a gram stain on those too. It is a cap requirement now to do a gram stain pretty much on every specimen except uh, uh, urine. Uh, but we, do, we never reject those specimens uh, because they are an invasive procedure. So you do go under, you do get uh, anesthetized uh, in order to obtain those specimens, your bronchial washes, your bronchial lavages. And also, you know, when you have uh, lung transplant patients, which is what we have a lot of at the hospital, or uh, cystic fibrosis patients, uh, basically you're collecting a sample from them. They may not be actively, uh, you know, infected with something, so you're not going to see a lot of uh, neutrophils in their sample, but it's still something we want to culture up because they could have what's normally, a, you know, environmental bug that's harmless to a healthy individual but in them it could be deadly because they're immunocompromised for example if you're a lung transplant you know about to receive or have received a lung transplant you're immunocompromised during that period or if you're have if or if you have cystic fibrosis um, you know your body's not as good as fighting off respiratory pathogens so that's why we uh, always just accept those specimens but uh, what we've been seeing a lot of in the lab recently is, you know, when we get respiratory specimens, for example, a sputum from uh, co positive COVID patients, basically, sometimes it doesn't even look good, uh, you know, it just looks like spit, you know, because the patient is not producing or expectorating a sputum. And, uh, you know, that's not something we can culture. So what we have to do is, you know, we do the gram stain, we say, uh, you know, we're not able to culture this, and uh, then we have to cancel or credit the specimen. Uh, and so we're not able to do the respiratory culture. And um, yeah, so, and sometimes, you know, it doesn't look too bad, but uh, visually, but then when you look at, at it underneath the microscope, uh, you know, it's just, there's no neutrophils there. There's nothing indicative of a sign of infection because they're dealing with a viral issue, not a bacterial issue. So basically, you know, we, it's not something we can, it's not worthwhile to work up on the bench. And that's the whole principle behind the respiratory specimen rejection, is that if you were to uh, inoculate it and work it up on the bench, then basically what you'd be seeing is just, you know, respiratory uh, oral flora and no pathogen. So just to save time, save money, you know, we reject it earlier on, so, you know, there's nothing here that's 
uh, you know, deemed worthwhile to work up. There are no pathogens here based on this criteria. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about specimen rejection in general, as well as specifically for respiratory specimens. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.